Vanessa Gabriel is an English rock musician, singer, songwriter, producer, label owner, studio owner and philanthropist. He started his career as the bonkers lead singer of uh, Genesis from 1967 and he left in 1975 and since then he's pursued a solo career, but it has to be said sporadically. Uh, he has promoted world music significantly through the Real World Studio and uh, the Real World Label. Uh, he has released four self-titled albums and four two-letter title albums uh, and also uh, an album called Scratch My Back, which is an album of covers, and an album called New Blood, which is an album of orchestral remakes of his own songs. Hi, my name's Dan. So this is the first solo album by Peter Gabriel. It's an unnamed album, uh, which is the first of four unnamed albums that he released as solo albums. Uh, so it's sometimes known as Peter Gabriel 1, and it's sometimes known as Car because of the uh, album cover. Uh, it's not my first encounter with this, uh, but I would not say I'm familiar with it at all. So um, Peter left Genesis uh, relatively amicably. He didn't rush to bring this out uh, after that. He kind of left a, a grace period on purpose. Um, and here it is. And I would describe this as being art rock with a kind of veering towards prog rock. So to try and pick that apart a little bit, not in terms of description here, there's I feel like there's rock, which is kind of straightforward, and prog rock, which is definitely not. And somewhere in the middle between the two is art rock. But art rock is is a thing that has, I don't think, had such a, a strong uh, effort to def defining it as prog rock has, and partly possibly because prog rock uh, uh, fans tend to be the kind of people who like uh, good definitions and you know tend to be a bit geeky about it, uh, whereas art rock is a bit more kind of arty in that sense. Um, definitely, I would say that uh, Peter Gabriel, when he, as he moves on, uh, definitely kind of embraces the art rock thing quite a lot. In here, I feel like he's still got a little kind of... Uh, uh, he, he's got like the, the echoes of the ripples of uh, prog rock going on still here in this. Um, but yeah, it's not worth getting into huge kind of arguments about the, the fine distinctions here. Um, that, but let's get into a little bit more description. So Salisbury Hill, is the second track of the album and is a really strong song. It's incredibly well known and uh, I love it. It's the most excellent song. Um, otherwise, it's quite a curious mix of things from the bizarre barbershop start of Excuse Me and then Excuse Me is a kind of, I don't know how to describe it, maybe a kind of ragtime thing. Um, and then a grandiose Here Comes the Flood. There's a couple of tracks that have got um, orchestra on them, uh, which, you know, makes them really sound big. Um, and it's, it, it, so it's, it's rock, but it's, it's grandiose rock, or at times it's not. It's stripped back, and it's kind of um, got a kind of more of a solo intensity to it uh, with that. Now, to my mind, I've got this problem, which is, of course, that what I try and do is, as much as possible, to review these albums in isolation, as if I've just heard the album and I don't know much about the rest of uh, somebody's history, because I want to present to people what it is like if they just kind of came across it in a record shop, picked it up, or, you know, kind of went and listened to it these days on, on Spotify, you know, would they like to do that? Um, and particularly maybe for people who don't know the background or the, the stuff that's surrounding it. Um, and um, that's hard for me on this album. It's easy for me on a lot of albums because I haven't heard them before. But on this one I have, and I know a lot more about Peter Gabriel and Genesis. So uh, it's harder for me to do this isolation thing on here. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying that as a preamble to the fact that I'm going to say he, I feel like he sings differently on this album to how he sang with Genesis. It's more restrained um, and it's got more kind of pathos to it. 
Um, it's got a, an ability to sound slightly vulnerable, which is nice. It still sounds quite like Genesis at times in the production. Um, so apparently in retrospect, he thinks that so Peter Gable thinks that some of the tracks, particularly Here Comes the Flood, was overproduced. And in concert, he tended to do it just with him and a piano. I'll be interested to hear what that sounded like. Um, he's got a great cast of musicians here. I'm going to say that particularly because he's got two uh, two musicians that I really uh, respect and admire. Uh, Robert Fripp and Tony Levin, who uh, are from King Crimson. And Tony Levin has been all over the place. Uh, so what was this, 1977? He's still all over the place. Uh, but he has had a long time uh, collaboration with Peter Gabriel. Um, and with King Crimson and with other people he crops up all over uh, and he's a great bassist I love him um, back to this album musically I would say it's quite approachable uh, The so it's it's kind of rock but it does have this kind of grand feel to it um, but it's uh, it's not like completely out there in terms of music uh, the songs are well okay so this is Peter Gabriel compared to Peter Gabriel in Genesis um, being more kind of grounded uh, in reality, although having said that, it's still at times fairly fantastic. I mean, uh, Salisbury Hill, for example, is this whole idea of kind of a mystical eagle and stuff. Um, but there's there's no squonks or slipperman here or anything like that. Um, overall, I think it's a strong album. Uh, I feel... Again, it might be just because I can't isolate it enough in my head. Uh, it feels like it's a little bit too big for its boots, and it hasn't quite settled out of into being something different as a as a solo artist. And it's still at times hanging on a little bit too much to Genesis. That, as I said, that might be because I know of the great stuff that's to come in his solo career later after this. But I like it. It's a good album. Um, and as always, I'd love to know what you think of this album. So please do tell me. And the easiest way to do that is to send me a message by Carrier Pigeon. Or maybe you can leave a message in the comments down there. Well, that's it from me for now. When the night shows, the signals grow on radios. All the strange things, they come and go. There's early warnings. Stranded starfish have no place 